I welcome again Dr. Neil McKinney from Victoria, Canada. He's an experienced naturopathic doctor in and specialized in cancer treatment. Very welcome, Neil. Hi, this video. Good to see you again. Uh, it's good to talk to you all the time, and uh, I have learned a lot from you, Neil. And I've learned from you too. <laughs> Uh, you have written a book. I, I have read it. Yeah, it's just <laughs> naturopathic oncology. And uh, so you can only write the book when you really know a lot. And this book is pretty <laughs> thick. And uh, uh, many, many times I consult it and, and get good ideas from you. So Thank you. Can you maybe first in general, just tell us about uh, your cancer treatments? I mean, I know this is uh, <laughs> 30 years, but what, what is your approach? Yeah, well, I what we started doing in the 80s, when I first came to practice 1985 through the late 80s, early 90s, we were looking mainly at cell receptors on the cancer cells as targets of therapy. So we would know, for example, that uh, um estrogen receptors very important in breast cancer so we would look for things that modify estrogen like indole 3 carbonyl you know, it helps change estrogen metabolism in the liver and other tissues and change the behavior of receptors throughout the body and so we would look we look at targets like estrogen receptors and um you know uh, mTOR and all these different pathways uh, growth signaling pathways that were going on but mainly working around the, the surface of the cell and trying to find interventions that work for those. And what came up in the early days was uh, green tea, EGCG extract, curcumin, um, boswellia, quercetin, a whole bunch of natural medicines that would interfere with these different uh, receptors. So, uh, and some of them we found in combination actually seemed to work pretty well. Um, particularly the curcumin green tea um, quercetin mixture was very useful. And I found a Chinese herbal formula, um, a Chinese herbal formula that was very successful. But um, there were really very limited success with this. Early cancers uh, were amenable to it. And the kind of cancers that conventional therapy had the most success with, we had success with. But some of the cancers that regular medicine does very poorly with like advanced pancreatic cancer. Well, we, we weren't doing well either. So we also spent a lot of time focusing on um, natural medicines that might aid chemotherapy and radiation therapy to work better with less harm. So there were a number of different things we can use, you know, mistletoe and low dose naltrexone immune therapies and um, you know, various other herbal extracts and nutraceutical extracts we use with chemotherapy or radiation therapy, like uh, using curcumin radiation therapy lowers the harm, increases the benefit. So we spent a lot of time looking into these things and trying to be complementary because the alternatives, we didn't have find some miracle that would cure cancers. But over time, gradually started going deeper into the cell, looking at the epigen mitochondria became a big uh, thing of mine. There was a, a study done in Alberta, Canada in, uh, 2007 that showed DCA, dichloroacetate, basically chlorinated vinegar, would spark up oxygen burning and mess with the metabolism of the cancer cell that had become dependent on non-oxygen or fermentation metabolism. And we found that that, would, uh, that drug really, really made tumors disappear. Unfortunately, it was horribly nerve toxic, worse than most chemotherapy. But it, it showed us something. We always thought that the mitochondria, these little combustion chambers that burn fuel in, in every cell in our body, that there's, you know, they're very important. Warburg talked about this way back, uh, not previous generation or two. So turns out that the mitochondria are very important, but we were afraid to increase the energy to the cancer cell. We didn't want to give it energy. It wouldn't have you know, potentially make it grow. Well, what this study showed DCA was that you could mess with that metabolism and spark up oxygen burning, which actually provides more ATP energy, but it messes with the ability of the cancer cell to keep growing. So um, that was a great breakthrough in our thinking that, hey, we can really do something with these mitochondria and it makes a big difference when we do. So, and it's safe. <laughs> uh -huh. So that became the next focus is the metabolism of cancer and spent many years working on those ideas 
which are well described in my books, using alpha lipoic acid instead of DCA or, or along with it, um, nebulizing it, giving it intravenously, giving it orally, and searching for adjuncts to it that made it more, more successful. And I came up with a formula called MitoSAP um, several years ago that seemed to be quite good. So that was, that was the next big focus. But uh, through all of this, I was also using a lot of um, mistletoe therapy, uh -huh. and which was very popular in Europe. Yeah. And in fact, when I came and lectured in Switzerland, I'd just been to the mistletoe conference in um, Germany. Well, and you, you came there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was always something great. But then I discovered the drug low-dose naltrexone, an opiate. Now, it turns out that opiates actually increase the growth of cancer. When they're given around surgery, they increase risk of relapse. If they're given later for pain, uh, they actually hasten the demise of the patient, at least somewhat. So it turned out that this opiate blocking drug naltrexone was very effective at uh, turning off this, these growth factors, but at the same time, getting the immune system to stop protecting and supporting the cancer and turn around and start hitting it and getting rid of it. So the immune system is very finely tuned to pick up not just uh, dead cells or you know, bad cells, but bad proteins, bad fats, bad um, uh, other chemicals. Uh, sugar moiety. So it, it's very adept at saying there's something wrong with this cell. Even if it's not a cancer cell, it can be any number of diseases. The immune system can pick up that, that something is out of order. And it should, of course, then either fix it or get rid of it um, and allow, allow a new cell to take over. So it turns out that the immune system is very important. And once I got together the low dose naltrexone with mistletoe, that made a huge advance in the survival of my patients, uh, working more with the metabolics and then you know, later ketogenic diet and other things that uh, alter the metabolism of the cancer cell. The, then we started to see much more fruitful results. Not a lot of cures of stage four cancers, that's for sure, but you know, um, some very, very long-term survival in cases that might have had a six month prognosis, you know, alive and well five years later. So, you know, that sort of thing was very gratifying. Yeah. So I don't think I've cured, absolutely cured, you know, outright never see again cancers a lot in my career, but I've helped a lot of people live longer and better with these yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, surface receptors and then targeting the mitochondria and the metabolism and then targeting the immune system after the cancer. And then just at the end of my career, really started getting into the stem cancer stem cell issue. So it turns out that uh, cancer okay. cells can... Maybe uh, I can ask a question in between. Uh, uh, people uh, want to know if naturopathic medicine is working during the chemotherapy. Do, oh, they, ha do they have to be cautious or, or can they go together? Well, yeah, you do have to be cautious. There's a number of different things that... So it turns out, for example, quercetin from apples and onions and so on, very common bioflavonoid in the diet. It's very effective against a lot of cancers and it changes the metabolism. It changes the stem cell behavior. These resist develop uh, chemotherapy resistant cells or radiation resistant cells that go dormant and survive therapy, that sort of thing. But it interferes poorly with a couple of the chemotherapy drugs. So while we, I give it very freely with most chemotherapy drugs, there's very specific ones that I can't. And same thing goes for a thing, number of things like green tea that we use freely outside of chemotherapy, not such a good idea with most of the chemo drugs. So unless I have specific evidence that the, uh, something is safe with a specific chemo drug, I, I keep away from it and just do more general things during chemo, support the immune system with the stragglers herbs and um, low dose of trexone, mistletoe. Um, mistletoe very well established being complementary to chemo. Mm -hmm. But then with each specific chemo drug, there's sometimes some of them you want to use B vitamins with, for example, taxanes, but um, some others you don't want to use B vitamins with at all. So it, it's, yeah. they're very different drugs. Not all chemotherapy drugs work the same way. Some work through oxidative stress. Some are protein uh, inhibitors. You know, some are uh, at work by completely different mechanisms, blocking a certain key pathway like mTOR. So it, it, there's no one size fits all here. For each chemotherapy drug or each combination of chemotherapy drug, you've got to go through and, and eliminate this drug doesn't go with that one. This one doesn't go with this one, but hey, both of them go with this one. So we'll give that. So this is why I got into the more detail in my books yeah. of which things go with which chemotherapy drugs. Okay. And when in doubt, just the defaults of um, using mistletoe and um, you know, a few simple things. Yeah. You have shortly mentioned uh, the... the the therapy, the naturopathic therapy during radiation. 
Can mm. you repeat it for the because I think not everybody has uh, understood it. Yeah. What what, well, what do you suggest during a radiotherapy? Okay. Well, absolutely, the most important thing is uh, curcumin and uh, uh, berberine. Especially now, if the radiation is to the pelvis, say for ovarian cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, then uh, there's quite a bit of risk to the, the bladder and the bowel being burnt with the radiation. And those we would give aggressively things like berberine. Um, if it's radiation to the lungs and other, you know, other, the brain, somewhat different uh, rules apply. So it depends on the tissue, how oxygenated that tissue is in certain certain peculiarities of its biochemistry, which adjuncts we use. But the generic ones are uh, curcumin, omega-3 fish oils, always helpful and safe, and berberine. And um, those, those are the keys. Thanks. Yeah, you're confirming what I suggest. <laughs> yeah. You're a very smart you doctor. <laughs> you really are. I, that's, I'm glad uh, to know you. That's because I was your student. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's been a very good exchange over the years. <laughs> yeah, so, I see the shift also. See, I, uh, we have more possibilities these days than 30 years ago. That's for yeah. sure. And better, yeah. better products on the market also. Yes. Yeah, no. absolutely. So did you, did you ever see cancer disappear? Oh, yeah. I, I've seen cancer disappear. Uh, in ways, sometimes it's just a miracle. You can't believe it overnight. It seems to be gone. Uh, and one of the most important incidents happened before I trained as a doctor. And I think it's one of the things that inspired me and made me respond to what Terry Fox was encouraging was I had a lady I knew who um, had a very bad marriage and situation, a very abusive, very cruel, abusive husband. And she was uh, not allowed to go out, not allowed to talk to other people. It was just a terrible, terrible emotional situation for her. And she developed, she finally went to the doctor knowing she was very sick and she had stage four cervical cancer spread into her liver, spread through her lymph nodes, spread to her bones. Um, it was, she was told she would only live a couple of months um, and they could extend that by a few more months by giving chemotherapy. So with an encouragement, um, myself and some others, she left the marriage and went and got some counseling. And she worked on various sexual abuse and, and other emotional abuse and what made her vulnerable to this man. And she dealt with her relationship with her father and some other people in her life. And I actually went down and, and was with her through some of these therapies, that gestalt therapy that she was going through. And she came back and uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said, oh my God, you know, you're still here and uh, we got to get you in right away in chemo. And she said, I don't, I think you better do another scan. And he did a scan and her cancer was gone. She went on to have children, one of whom became a naturopathic doctor. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's, these are great so, stories. And and we all she, love. The, the cancer was just gone yeah, by, yeah. by forgiving, forgiving sexual and emotional abuse. Yeah. So, you know, you never know what the path yeah. is for some people. Some people, it's a herb. Some people, it's a nutraceutical. Some people, it's a diet like keto. Others, it's yeah. forgiveness and a prayer. You know, I've seen people cured by praying to gods I don't believe in. So, <laughs> you know, it, there's, there's all kinds yeah. of way out of this pickle. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, you have written such a great book. Can you show it us again? And where, if somebody is really interested in learning more about naturopathic oncology, where can we buy this book? Well, it's uh, it is there is an option of print it being printed in Ireland and shipped, you know, at a reasonable cost throughout Europe. So you can have to go through Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Yes. So it's Naturopathic Oncology, an Encyclopedic yeah. Guide for Patients and Physicians by yeah. uh, Dr. Neil McKinney. So the fourth edition is the blue covered one. That's the most recent one. Mm -hmm. And um, there's two little biochemical errors in it, but they're not very significant. But you know, it's, it's always a work in progress to make these things work. But this yeah. is the, the last edition I intend to write. And But it's also available as a PDF. If people just want a PDF version, mm -hmm. they can write to my, my email. Okay. Uh, to my website, and I'll, uh, they can immediately get the PDF version. So to finish it up, uh, just 
a few words about your stem cell research. Mm -hmm. Is there anything new we can expect in cancer treatment? Yes, well, we're, we're applying for some uh, research grants to clinical research and actually prove this. But um, what we've been doing is, um, where did I put that now? There's several different ways that cancer cells can become like stem cells or stem cells can corrupt it to become like cancer cells. There's really four mechanisms. So it's quite a complicated business, but it turns out that um, there are several key targets that we know that what happens with the stem, stem cells are like cells in a fetus, in an embryo. When we're first being formed, there's a lot of relatively unspecialized cells that are just concentrated on growing. And somehow then later they get, they settle down and cells are just replaced one by one as they die off. And the number of cells remain the same the number of cells in your brain or your, your eye or your left leg remain the same through your adult life. Just one replaces another. The number of cells doesn't change, but somehow cancers go back to this embryonic way of, of growing that they just grow new cells, new cells, new cells, new cells, new cells. But some of those cells can go dormant. They can go into st storage and shut down and you can't kill them with chemo. You can't kill them with radiation. Then you can't kill them with natural medicines because they're not cycling. They're basically not there. They're hibernating. They're out of sight and out of touch of, from the medicines. So it's these cells that will survive therapies and come back and cause a relapse. But actually stem cell properties include the ability to move around in the body. So usually it's not cancer just growing in its original place that kills people. It's when it goes from the lungs to the brain or goes from the colon to the liver, or goes, you know, goes to a vital organ or gets spread through the body and becomes you know, huge toxic burden that people die of cancer. So it turns out that really all the relapses, the, the resistance to therapy and you know, the late stage uh, dissemination of cancer all has to do with the stem cell issue. So we've, we found that there's a number of different um, factors involved here that um, the um, it's complicated cytokines as uh, CLX4 um, receptors for certain cytokines are things that are causing this uh, sort of fetal growth pattern to reoccur and epigenetic changes that turn back on some of these uh, genes that had been shut down early in life to establish a normal growth pattern. So we, there's different targets here, epigenetically and biochemically in different parts of the cell. And so we've, we've found that there are several candidate substances and the most important is quercetin uh, from apples and onions, but also curcumin. So it became my policy after someone had gone through initial cancer therapy, let's say chemo and radiation or uh, whatever, alternative IV vitamin C and what not that we were, you know, mistletoe we were using, mm -hmm. and the cancer had settled down, it became my policy to put everybody on quercetin and curcumin. Mm -hmm. And that in order to maintain and keep these stem cells dormant. And I, I, looking back over my career, even back 30 some years, when I wasn't aware of that this is what I was doing, those people who got quercetin long term did better than people who didn't, for example. So I knew clinically there was something there from my experience, but I had to, you know, get deeper into it and find things that made it more yeah. successful. So quercetin and curcumin are the big ones, vitamin A. And the one I'm really doing a lot of research on right now is black seed, uh, nigella sativa, um, which contains something called thymoquinone. And the black seed or black cumin seed was written in the Quran. The Prophet Muhammad said it cures everything but death. And it was, it's become the uh, norm for uh, Muslim people to grind some of this up with some honey and eat it before they go to prayers. And it's part of the culture as sort of a healthful practice to keep people well. Well, there's not a lot of research on it, and I don't know quite why, but it might be political. I mean, God knows you don't want to publish a paper that contradicts the Prophet Muhammad, right? Mm. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> there really is not a lot of research on this. Yeah. So we're not really sure how to dose it, but certainly the cell studies and the rodent studies show some great promise there that it's something that's going to modulate these stem cells and keep them nice mm -hmm. and quiet and keep them from coming okay. back at you. So, so the black, so black seed, quercetin, curcumin, yeah. and okay. vitamin A. So you keep researching these issues, stem cells, so that we can expect more uh, knowledge 
in the few future from you. <laughs> That's right. So I've uh, written up a, 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 a sort of a narrative of how this goes, but then a summary of the key biochemical targets and key natural medicines that might work for that. And then I have my student researchers, uh, osteopathic medical students, naturopathic medical students and others going through PubMed and once a month, they show me what they found and I try and integrate it back into the work. Mm -hmm. So we've got now quite a lot of research. I'll send you um, a draft of this for your personal yeah, okay. edification. I'm quite <laughs> ready to put out to the public, but I'm going to write a handbook on this and I will get that out in the next year or two. Okay. I'll write a book about it. Great. Neil, again, it was a great pleasure talk to you and learn from you <laughs> many many Thank thanks you, and You're i wish fine. you all the best and i cannot come to canada right now no. too many restrictions but i would love to see you again thanks yes. a lot thank you oh.